Luke, the fifth chapter, you remember the story? I will not reiterate from verse 1. I will just start on verse 4. And we'll talk about here. Peter is on the boat with Jesus. And Peter and his, his employees. You remember the story? Jesus told him to put out a little bit from the shore so that he might preach. And he might give the word to the people. And they did that. And now we're at the point where Jesus finished speaking. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I'll let down the nets. I'm going to say it in another way. Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Then probably just looking at Jesus and Jesus looking at him. What did I say? Not a word, no other word. And Peter says, but because you say so, I will let down the net. See, even just a different way of reading it also gives you a whole lot of more information rather than just reading it straight through. You begin to capture between the pauses of what is actually being said that's not even said. There are no insignificant points in the Word of God. What God gives, every word is critical. Every word is, is worth analyzing because it's meaningful. And then it says, when they had done so, they let down the nets after he had not caught anything. And here it is in the daytime. He says they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Now, I just want you to begin to learn something from this message here. Just these, from just these few verses, he said, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out in the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now, you already know, they caught a tremendous catch of fish. They had been working all night. Lock these points. You should know them by now. I've been over them time and time again. But the more you go over them, the more it becomes real to you. You begin to understand. Look at the sequence of events. Peter is on the shore cleaning his nets with his men. And one of the things, and I, and I give credit to uh, uh, Minister Cliff Payne, who came to me after church. He said, Bishop, you need to know something about those nets. And I'm going to re re reveal that to you just a little bit here. He said, you need to know something. These were not little bitty nets like we have that when we go f with a fish net. It's not like fish net pantyhose. It's, it's big nets. They've got their big ropes. And because that's, you know, they didn't have the type of nylon stuff that we have. Uh, the, 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 you know, that you, when you go fishing, they didn't have the kind of fishing things we had. So they had these big ropes. And so Peter talked about, and he said, you asked the question a few weeks ago why they fished at night? Because they were big ropes. They fish at night. Because if you fish in the daytime, the fish can see the ropes. No fish in his right mind is going to swim into a rope or into a net. He's not going to do it. So they fished at night. And so when Jesus tells them to throw off the nets in the daytime, don't you know you can't catch no fish in no daytime with big old nets? When the fish see it, they swim in another direction. Which shows even more so that when Jesus said, let down the nets, Master, we fished all night and we didn't catch nothing. How are we going to catch something in the daytime when the fish got eyes and they can see? But, because you say so. And when he put down big old fish nets, the fish swam into the net. You know why? Because Jesus told them to. What man could not do, man could do with Jesus. And he was pulling in such a load that 
the net began to break, and then they called the other ship, and then they pulled in so much the ships began to sink. Imagine, if you would, that if they'd had more ships, Jesus could have kept the fish coming. They could have emptied the Sea of Galilee of all the fish, and they would have been rich for the rest of their life. But they only had two boats. So the sequence of events in order to get all of this was one. He's on the shore cleaning the nets. And Jesus says, when he steps into his boat, and he says, push out a little from the shore. One thing he had to do, stop cleaning his nets. What he had been doing, he had to stop doing. Two, he had to let Jesus use his boat. Why? Why? Come on, common sense. We be real in here. Why should we let Jesus use the boat? We need to fish, and we need to clean our nets because we got to fish tonight. We can't fish when we got seaweed and everything all over these nets. We need to clean these nets. We don't have time to, to let you use the boat to preach. So the sequence of events, we had to stop cleaning. Number two, we're going to let you use the boat. So he says, okay, push out a little bit. Give me that verse that says that. What is that, verse 2? Is that it? Verse 2, 5, 2? It's probably not, but it's 3, I think. He said, he saw the water he left there, and the fishermen who were washing their nets. Verse 3, he says, put out. He got in the one belonging to Simon Peter, and he said, put out a little, he asked him. So Peter had to put out a little. He had to go out of his way. He had to go out of his way from cleaning his nets in order to let Jesus use the boat. Remember it, know this in your mind, and don't ever forget it, that Jesus didn't offer to pay him anything. Jesus didn't say, I'll give you some money if you let me use your boat so I can go preach. I need to do some ministry, so therefore, how much are you going to charge me to use the boat? I need to preach the word of God. How much are you going to charge me so that I can get your men to go on out here and, and do what's necessary to put out a little from the shore? Sequence of events. Peter had to tell those guys, come on, let's go out a little bit. He said, pull up the anchor. Push away from the shore. Push us on out here. Roll whatever it is or let down the sail. Some work had to be done for Jesus to do his preaching. That's a sequence of events. And Peter sacrificed whatever it was that he had to sacrifice. If he had to tell the men, I need you to go out there and go fishing or go out there and let Jesus go and preach. Can you imagine what they could have told Peter? Wait a minute. We put in our eight-hour shift last night. You expecting us to work some more? We just got 30 more minutes on this shift before we clean these nets. After that, we gone. We up and out of here. We fixing the bounce. But what did they do? They listened to what Peter said. The men that were on the boat, they listened to what Peter, Peter realized he's going to have to pay them to let Jesus use the boat a little bit more. Hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. Don't you know? Can you read in between the, the lines that somebody had to push that boat off the dock? Somebody had to haul anchor. Somebody had to, to steer. Somebody had to let down a sail if there was a sail. If there wasn't a sail, somebody had to row. Didn't it? How are we going to get out there? You think it just... You just you sit down on the boat and the boat goes out by itself. Somebody had to put forth some effort in order for Jesus to preach. And they put forth the effort. So there's the sequence. We had to stop cleaning the net, doing what I'm doing. I got to stop doing what I'm doing in order to let you do what you want to do, preacher. I had other stuff on my mind, cleaning my nets, but you want me to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead. So I stopped cleaning. Number two, I'm going to put out a little bit. And then he put out a little bit. And then he sat down to teach. Jesus sat down to teach with this. Go on, verse, uh, verse 5. And then he said, no, 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 no. I want to back up, back up, back up. Give me back to verse 3. Here it is. He said, verse 3, then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Peter sitting back there, men sitting back there. Get it in your mind. Get it in your mind. You got to be able to see it. I took you a few weeks ago in a meditative state for you to be able to do that. You should be practicing that thing because that's where you get revelation. Your revelation doesn't come with your eyes open, sitting up, just doing something, busy with going on in the world. Revelation comes with quiet time with God. You should be practicing what I taught you. All right, then he sat down and talked to people from the boat. Now, third thing that happened, he says, well, third thing, Peter's got to sit here and bide his time while Jesus is preaching. Notice this, while Jesus is preaching, Peter can't be cleaning the net. When Jesus finished preaching, Peter's going to have to go back to the shore and clean the net. I got other stuff to do than to wait on you to preach. 
But Peter didn't do that. Notice the sequence of events. Here's the situation. I'm cleaning my net. And Jesus is preaching. He gets into my boat. He says, look, I want to go out a little bit. You mean I got to stop cleaning my net so you can go do what you want to do? Now you want me to go out a little bit more so I got to go out a little bit more? Now you sitting down to preach. What I'm supposed to do while you preaching? Who going to pay me for my time? And Peter didn't say any of these things. But of course, if it had been one of us, that's what we would have come up with. I mean, you know, I got some other stuff to do. I could be at home. The game come on in a little while. Ain't got time for you to be preaching all this time. And so he said, put out a little bit. He did it, and so he sits down to preach. Next thing that goes on, he finishes preaching. He goes on verse 5. And he, well, all right, you're on 4 there. He says, you're on verse 4. He says, put out in the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now get this to you here. Here's the next point that Peter has to do. He has to overcome his reason. I got these big old nets. You want me to fish in the daytime? I've been fishing all night. And I ain't caught nothing. He got to come over, get over his mindset. Notice the sequence of events. You see them, you hear them, you hear them all. Nets, get up, put out a little bit from the shore, sit down and waste my time. Now you're telling me to go out more in the deep. He got to get over his mindset, his way of thinking. His way of thinking is that we done fished all night long and we ain't called nothing. And plus the fact, fish can see the net in a daytime. So they're not going to swim into the net. But, because you said so, now he has to overcome his own reason and go by revelation. And then when he does it, you see there's a big haul that comes in. All these fish come in. Now what does that teach us, Bishop? What does that teach us? What are you going over the same thing? What are you about to tell? I'm fixing to preach you the Bible from this verse. So that you can understand this. In order to get your blessing, you're going to have to be willing to let go of things and the way of life that you're accustomed to. And the way you've been doing things, you're going to have to let go of what you've been doing and take on and pursue the things and the way that he directs you to go into. Peter had to let go what his plan was and follow somebody else's plan. What you got to get through your head, and I'm going to say it and repeat it again and again, this is what this whole message is going to be about. You are going to have to learn how to let go of what your plans are and follow somebody else's plan. That's somebody else you got to follow Jesus' plan. You got a plan for your life. And understand this, Peter had a plan. Peter had a plan. We going to clean these nets. And I'm going to pay y'all to finish cleaning the net. And we going out fishing later on. And here come the preacher. The preacher saying, stop cleaning the nets. Go back out there on the shore so I can preach. We got another plan. Understand this, that you got another plan today. You got another plan and have had another plan all your life. You've had a plan of where you're supposed to be and what you want to do all your life. But look at where it has got you. I don't think nobody in here is satisfied with where he is in his life today. And if you are satisfied with where you are, you got all that you need and you happy, well then praise God that you are there. But I don't think we got nobody. We might be content, but we want to get a little bit more. We want to have a little bit more. And understand, you are at this point because you have worked your plan. Peter had worked his plan. And what is the thing that planned that he'd worked? He didn't get nothing. And please know this. The plan that the world has for you to work is just a plan to get you enough money so you can make it to the end of the week or until you can make it to your next payday. That's all the world system is set up with. Just enough so you can get to the next paycheck. Not more than enough, just enough. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. And see, that's the plan of the world. But God has another plan, a plan to bless you, a plan to prosper you, a plan to give you hope and a future. Not plans to harm you. God has a plan for you. See, what Peter had to learn, and what's out of this story, y'all, is that here it is, Peter had a plan to finish cleaning his nets. 
Peter had a plan that when he finished it, he was going to put him back on the ship and wait until later on and go back out and hope to get a catch later on. But Jesus had another plan. And in order for Peter to get that catch, he had to get rid of his plan and follow Jesus' plan. Amen. The lesson that you need to learn is you got to get rid of the plan that you got in your mind and follow the plan of the one who knows what's right for your life. Amen. I am the Lord your God who teaches thee what is best for you.